So now we've got to take a brief look of the effects of resonance on hybridization. Uh, in this case, remember that a single resonance structure doesn't perfectly portray the structure of the molecule. So these resonance structures don't really exist. What really exists is some sort of average structure of the two we call the resonance hybrid. So, and your hybridization really should be determined based on the resonance hybrid, because that's your accurate portrayal of what the molecule looks like. So if we take a look at the allylic anion here, so, and I don't want to just look at this vague view, I want to kind of look at it with all the hydrogens in so we can kind of get a best, best look at it. So and we're going to look at this carbon atom right here in the two resonance structures. So in the resonance structure on the left, he's got three sigma bonds and a lone pair, and appears to be sp3 hybridized. So, but in the structure on the right, looks like he's only got a steric number of three, so three electron domains, three sigma bonds, no lone pairs, and looks to be sp3 two hybridized. So the question is, is he really sp3 hybridized or is he really sp2 hybridized or is it like sp2 and a half or, you know, what's really going on here? Well, the truth is he's going to turn out to be sp2 hybridized. So and the idea is if we look at the resonance hybrid here at this carbon, so we can see here that it appears he's pretty much got a steric number of three with this partial pi bond here the, with the delocalized electrons and that would make him sp2. We can further see that, you know, if we kind of take a look at the electron configuration for carbon here for the valence electrons, uh, he's got four electrons here, and if he becomes sp3 hybridized, he'd have an unpaired electron in each of four sp3 hybrid orbitals. But if he becomes sp2 hybridized, he'd have three unpaired electrons so in sp2 hybrid orbitals, but he'd have this electron left in a p orbital. So if you are participating in pi bonding in any way, shape, or form, you must have an unhybridized p orbital. So, and since we can see the partial pi bond here, so we know this carbon's part you know, participating in pi bonding to some degree, and therefore cannot be sp3 hybridized, not having a p orbital. So in this case, must be sp2 hybridized, and therefore would have an unhybridized p orbital, and can participate in pi bonding. So the moral of the story here is if you've got a couple different resonance structures, and in one, an atom's sp3 hybridized, and another, he's sp2 hybridized, so he's really sp2 hybridized, not sp3. If you're participating in resonance whatsoever, you cannot be sp3 hybridized. Let's take a look at some examples. So if we look at a few examples of where resonance is going to impact hybridization, so we're going to be talking about atoms that have lone pairs of electrons. And if you recall, uh, a lone pair of electrons can be stabilized by resonance if it is exactly one bond away from pi electrons. So if we look at this structure right here, these, uh, this lone pair right here is exactly one bond away from these pi electrons and isn't going to be involved in resonance. You know, we could take, move the lone pair into a pi bond, pi bond into a lone pair. And the other structure we would get so we'd have a pi bond here positive formal charge on the nitrogen and a lone pair of electrons and a negative formal charge on the carbon so in this structure you can see that the nitrogen appears to be sp3 hybridized but in this structure he appears to be sp2 hybridized and again key is he's really sp2 hybridized so if a lone pair is on an atom that looks like it's sp3 but you know there's going to be resonance with that lone pair it's really sp2 hybridized not sp3 so notice we don't have to worry about that with this lone pair over here for this atom over here the pi bond is two bonds away not one there's no resonance and this nitrogen is just simply sp3 hybridized so take a look at the next atom over here uh, we've got a couple different oxygens with the lone pairs but it's only this oxygen uh, that is one bond away from pi electrons. And so for one of the lone pairs is going to be in a p orbital. So when this atom is sp2 hybridized, not sp3. So he appears sp3, he's really going to be sp2. And one of the lone pairs will be in the p orbital and one of them will participate uh, in pi bonding to some degree delocalization. So the other lone pair, it turns out, will be perfectly localized in an sp2 hybrid orbital, but one lone pair will be in that p orbital and be delocalized. So another one here, so with this nitrogen right here in the lower left, that lone pair, again, is one bond away from pi electrons in the ring here. And being one bond away, looks like he's sp3 hybridized, but in the other resonance structures, he would indeed be sp2 hybridized. And again, the truth is, with the resonance hybrid, it really is more accurate to look at this being sp2 hybridized. He cannot be sp3 if he's participating in resonance, and indeed he is. So last example is kind of the tricky one here. So this nitrogen already looks sp2 hybridized in this structure. The question though is that this lone pair is one bond away from these pi electrons over here. And so is he sp hybridized? So if it weren't in a six membered ring like this, or at least a small ring of some sort like this, I would tend to say yes. But in this case, we're gonna say no. Uh, we would have a hard time doing resonance here, but if we did, lone pair becomes a pi bond, pi bond becomes a lone pair, and we would end up with a very difficult structure to form. 
So in fact, so difficult it's going to be impossible, as we'll see in a second. But positive formal charge on the nitrogen, so a lone pair negative charge there. So, and if you look, it appears this nitrogen is sp hybridized in this structure. And the bond angles for an sp hybridized atom are 180 degrees. That's impossible. So you cannot get a 180 degree bond angle here uh, with only a six-membered ring. Maybe in some larger ring, maybe that's possible, but not in a six-membered ring. And so in this case, we would not look at these lone, at the lone pair in this example as participating in resonance, and this nitrogen is just going to be sp2 hybridized. So kind of the exception to everything we've been talking about here, but one that commonly shows up.